as you say, it's not all positive. I mean, Jesus Christ, you go to my Instagram, and what is up with people? I don't understand why they follow somebody just to talk shit. You go yeah. to my Instagram, and, and like, you know, I've got, I got a decent amount of followers. You know, it's, it's nothing crazy, but, you know, I've got like 450,000 or something. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a decent number. And I, I have now roughly around 400 comments per shot. And guarantee 60% of it is people talking shit. And, and there's just too many to block. You just can't block them all. So I just, I don't even bother looking anymore. You yeah, you know, got to almost that. embrace it now. Like, it, 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 I mean, you become desensitized to it after a while. You're also a guy who, you know, you're, you're, you have a very like polarizing personality. So you're a guy that people yeah. are going to love or hate. So you've been dealing with that forever. Yeah, well, well, it, it's funny because at the weekend, obviously, we had Belport versus Gastelum and, and people talking shit about that as well. And I thought I was very complimentary on the FS1 post fight show. I was saying what a great job Kelvin Gastelum did. And people were still even commenting, saying, oh, my God, you wouldn't even give credit to Kelvin. I'm, because I, I'm assuming you didn't see it, Lewis, and for anyone that didn't see it, here's what I said. And I said, Kelvin Gaston looked amazing. Kelvin Gaston looked outstanding. He did what I couldn't do. He knocked him out and he looked calm. He looked relaxed. He, he, looked, he looked all these positive things. He looked incredible. I said, the only thing is that it's hard to gauge where Kelvin is in the middleweight division because I think it's fair to say that Vitor Belfort, the one that we saw Saturday night, isn't the Vitor Belfort of two years ago. I said he used to be taking testosterone replacement, uh, you know, he was on TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. And, of course, you can see the physical changes. You would have to be a fucking moron, not as a, as a post-fight analyst, not to mention that. Okay, so I was doing my job. Of course, pre-fight, pump the show going to be a great fight. Vito's a legend. Kelvin Gastelum, up and, not an up-and-comer, but new guy to the division. Yada, yada, yada. Just beat Tim Kennedy. Post-fight analysis. For me, not to mention the fact that the apparent change in Vito's physique, for me, not to mention that I wouldn't be doing my job as an analyst. And I said, so it's hard to gauge. I said, what Kelvin did was amazing. He went out there, he put on a fantastic show and knocked him out in the first round. You can't ask for better than that. But I'm just saying that Vito is a very difficult yardstick to use right now because you don't know where he is because he's lost four of his last five and all four of those were stoppages so well done Kelvin that was amazing it really was but does it mean that he's you know potential you know champion in waiting it's hard to say because of Vitor's difference these days yeah, and I, I'll post right now to the Twitter at BYM Pod. Um, I actually sent you this this image, the before and after yeah. of Vitor from five years, from 2012 when he first came back to the UFC to 2017. I mean, you're right. It is night and day difference. You're looking at like a guy who, and by the way, compared to me, he looks great. You know, let's just be, let's, let's get real here. I'm not going to talk shit on anybody's <laughs> body. But, you know, comparatively, if you look at it, it looks like two different people. And it is so obvious that the TRT was doing something for Vitor. I mean, this guy in his, you know, in his later years in his career had this crazy resurgence and it was doing wonders for him. And it's mm. almost kind of, you know, it's almost kind of, I don't want to say sad, but it, it makes me feel bad to watch him kind of get in there now and get killed the way he's getting killed um, comparatively to kind of where he was. Um, let me ask you a question. Does the UFC kind of discourage you from shitting on the guys for taking steroids? Um, to be honest, obviously we have production meetings when we work uh, at Fox Sports, FS1 as it's now called. And we have production meetings and of course, you know, we, we discuss what we're going to say. And, and I even say, I said, well, you know, the steroids thing is an issue. And they're like, you know, listen, Michael, they're not going to tell me what to say and what not to say. But they would prefer it if, you know, if I didn't focus on the negatives too much. And of course, you know, but. But here's the thing, and I'm not trying to shit on Vitor. I'm really not. I mean, I'm looking at that picture now, Lewis. Holy crap. Yeah. On the left, I mean, you know, I mean, there, there's a beast of a man. And on the right, he still looks decent. But the, the, the difference is stark. You know, it really is. It's day and night. Absolute day and night. But listen, for all my personal differences with Vitor aside and, and my, you know, long time stance against performance enhancing drugs. And I do believe testosterone replacement therapy was performance enhancing drugs. It was definitely performance enhancing drugs. And the fact that all these people were taking, taking it and allowed to take it for so long really was, um, you know, a, a, a blemish on this sport. It was absolutely ridiculous. And I think it made the sport look like it was um, not, a, not a credible sport because you wouldn't be able to get away with it anywhere. Anyway, Eventually, the athletic commissions, you know, they, they, they got onto this and, and they outlawed it. Now, the, the, the funny thing is, 
is that all these people that were on testosterone replacement therapy, they're still, they're still competing to these days. I mean, look at Vitor. He's still competing. So, uh, as I say, Vitor, you know, listen, you've got to give the guy credit. He was the heavyweight champion back in the day, juiced out of his mind, yes. He was a light heavyweight champion back in the day, juiced out of his mind, of course. <laughs> I love and how he you're giving him absolute, credit. <laughs> pardon me? I love how you're giving him credit. Yeah, and he went on an absolute tear in the middleweight division. Uh, and, you know, you've got to give him credit for that. But was he juiced out of his mind? Absolutely, 100%. Now he's not juiced out of his mind. It's a different veto. It's a different person. He's been stopped four times out of his last five. Um, you know, so, and, and God bless him. You know, I mean, I, I don't wish ill will on people. I don't, I don't want anyone to get hurt, but uh, the better man won on Saturday night. And, you know, I think Vitor should hang it up. Well, Vitor said he's got one more fight. Um, in him, and then that's it. He's gonna, he's gonna. You know retire. what I would like? I would like Vito to have to go out there and face some young kid that's roided out of his mind, yeah. <laughs> just to let him know what it's like. You know what I mean? Stick him in there with somebody down in Brazil who's fiddling the system, who's roided out of his mind, and uh, he's just got superpowers because of his steroids, but fails his test, granted, but still, but still, Vito has to know what that feels like because you know it's it's just such an unfair. Advantage is such an unfair playing field, and I'll say this all, I say it all the time. You know, until somebody dies, nobody's going to realize what a problem this is and the advantages that they have. And one day, mark my words, you know, I mean, you saw that are helping, you know, but it's only a matter of time before someone dies, pays the ultimate price, and then everybody will think, holy shit, okay, something needs to be done. Well, in terms of a real opponent, I mean, if Vitor is going to do one final fight, it's, it's you know, the 185-pound division. He had mentioned wanting to do something like a, a Legends division, mm. which is just kind of, not for the UFC. Look, if they wanted to do a Legends league that were they were fighting in Costa Rica and they were bringing in, like, you know, Hoist versus, you know, you know whoever, right? I don't, I don't actually have a problem with that. If, if these guys want to fight, like, yeah, dude, I'd watch that. I'd watch that in a heartbeat. But I believe the UFC... You know, they're trying to be the Premier League. The guys who are fighting in the UFC, I believe they should be the best fighters in the world. I don't think that Major League Baseball should sure. offer a Legends League for older men who can't compete with the, the younger guys anymore. You know, if you can't compete anymore, maybe it's time to, to hang it up. But Vitor, nonetheless, exactly. has said he wants to have one more fight. Who do, you, who do you think the final fight should be? It has to be somebody older. It has to be somebody that's on his way out. Yeah, yeah, no, let, let's give him a kid juice out of his mind. Um, no, so... I mean, here's the thing. The Legends thing, that's just pathetic. I mean, talk about wanting to uh, stick around but make it easy for yourself. Okay, let's fight. Let's take out the knees, take out the elbows. We'll wear padded gloves. Uh, you know, it's just ridiculous. Listen, you've had a great career. As I said, heavyweight champ, light heavyweight champ, right? You've done it all. Move on. Just because you're still trying to get paid out of it, that's all it is. A Legends division. Come on, nobody wants to watch that. Nobody wants to watch it. And uh, it's laughable at best. I did say on Fox Sports on Saturday night, FS1, pardon me, um, a good fight, uh, an interesting fight that a lot of people would pay to see would be him versus Anderson Silver again. I mean, Anderson's yeah. got to be close to the end of his career. Vitor uh, obviously said one more fight. They did fight once before in Brazil. There's a fight card coming up in Rio. I think Anderson Silver versus Vitor Belfort 2 in Rio. I mean, that would be fantastic, you know, to see them two again uh, and two legends going up against one another, you know, so... That would be my pick. Yeah, look, I mean, I think that makes sense. Um, my only problem with it is, to be honest with you, Vitor got, I mean, look, he got caught, but he got embarrassed in that last fight with that front kick. Um, yeah. And it's not like Vitor, <laughs> Vitor's looked like he's declined like five times since then, whereas Anderson's yeah, declined, but not that type of decline. Anderson Silva still seems to be able to compete. You know, and the funny thing is as well is that, yeah, because Friday night, I, uh, I'm friends with a prince of Saudi Arabia. Talk about that for a name drop. And I uh, popped around to his house on Friday night. And he's friends with Anderson Silva. He's, he's a guy we call him Mash. And he's the, he's the coolest guy. He's the biggest MMA fan ever. And I went to his house. And he gave me an Anderson Silva t-shirt to wear. <laughs> so for a joke, he said, come on. He said, put it on, put it on. So I put it over my shirt. And I pretended I was on my phone. And he took a picture and he sent it to Anderson Silva. And, and if you go on Instagram or whatever, on Anderson Silva's Instagram, it's doing the rounds everywhere now. And he's using that as a, uh, he thinks it's funny. He thinks, oh, he must have still admire me. It's like, no, dude, we sent it for a joke. That's it was a funny. setup. And he's trying to get the rematch again. Um, 
Oh, that's, yeah, the, yeah, that's the picture that I sent you, right? I didn't realize that because you see, he posted the picture of you, and I didn't realize that you were. I didn't even notice you were wearing an Anderson Silva shirt. And <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing an Anderson Silva shirt because I thought it was funny. I thought I'll put it on, and then and then the prince is like, "Listen, I just screw the UFC. I pay more, more money. You two fight in my garden. You fight in my garden." So, but um, no, he's he's an awesome guy, and I was having a bit of fun there with Anderson. Listen, at the end of the day, I respect Anderson. How can you not respect the career that Anderson's had? He's, um, you know, come on, he was one of the guys that helped build the sport. Uh, so that was a bit of fun. And even yeah. though we had that fight and then we talked a little bit of trash afterwards, I don't really think there's any bad blood. So I don't mind sticking a T-shirt on and having a bit of fun.